this you? Are you tired of feeling like nothing is accomplished in your practice session and it seems pointless? Well, you're in luck. We have the right techniques to show you how to get the most out of your practice time. Hi, my name is Emily Kibito. I'm Megan Kelly. And I'm Matthew Webb. And we are piano pedagogy students here at Stephen F. Austin State University. We have created this podcast for both students and teachers alike to encourage them to utilize successful practice techniques. We hope you find our podcast to be very helpful. you need to have specific goals every time you sit in front of the piano. If certain measures are giving you trouble, isolate those measures and work on those measures until you've mastered the content. As Emily was playing earlier, F sharp, she was playing F sharp instead of F natural. So, she would need to isolate measure two. She was playing F sharp. So, I sh isolate measure two and work on that measure until she has it right. And just play it over and over until I get it right? Yes, and then you can move on. But remember to not always start at the beginning of the piece, especially... Um, like going from beginning to the end? Yes, start in different sections of the piece, so you're comfortable with it. So you're comfortable throughout the whole piece and not just from playing at the beginning. We don't want the beginning to sound good and the middle part to sound mediocre. Okay, got it. So. Okay, so I get that point. But what about this? My fingers feel awkward playing them. First of all, Emily, you're using the wrong fingerings. As you'll see, this first two notes, you play with your one and your five, then you continue with your one and your five, two, five, and then three, five. Always utilize the fingerings they give you on the music. If they don't provide fingerings, then use the fingerings your teacher writes in for you or fingerings that you've written in yourself. Oh, okay. Emily, why are you playing so fast? It says Allegro. That's the performance tempo. You need to start out at a practice oh. tempo at first. Okay. Then gradually work your way up to the performance tempo. Okay. How could I do that? By using a metronome, set your metronome at a lower um, speed, okay. and then just gradually work the tempo up to an allegro tempo, and then you would be able to play the piece all the way through. Oh, okay. okay. Teachers should instill in their students a positive attitude when it comes to both performing and practicing. Upon meeting a new student, ask them what they hope to gain from the lessons. This will help you in assessing their approach to the lessons, as well as establish a student-teacher relationship that is not based solely on authority. As we have already mentioned, set reasonable goals for your students. Avoid frustrating them past the point of being able to achieve their goals. They will naturally feel proud when they have successfully completed a task. I'm tired. I don't want to practice right now. Ugh. Occupied, maybe you should come back later and practice. Okay, maybe that's a good idea. Encourage your students to have a positive mindset before sitting down to practice at the piano. If they aren't concentrating very well, then not much is going to get done whenever they're practicing.
about Emily, what I found particularly effective whenever I'm practicing is that whenever I stop watching the clock and focus on my goals that I've set during the lesson, I tend to get done with my goals faster. Okay, but you told me to practice 30 minutes every day. Well, that was simply a guideline. If you accomplish your goals, in, like say in 15 minutes, then you've accomplished them earlier. But it's just simply a guideline to get you used to practicing every day. Get you in the habit of practicing every day. Oh, okay. Okay, Emily, for next week I want you to work on this piece. Okay. Um, I don't know where to start. Okay, well I'm going to write down here on your assignment sheet goals that you can have for this piece and things you can work on. Okay, cool. Thanks. A good idea for teachers is to have their students keep an assignment book. Writing down what is to be practiced and prepared each week is an excellent way for students to have something to refer to during the week. Writing down goals that are expected to be met by the next lesson also gives students a more explicit, narrow scope of material to practice and learn by the next lesson. Students that have trouble remembering to practice could keep a practice log. A practice log will require both parent and student cooperation. Each time a student sits down to practice, the time and material covered should be logged so the teacher can better understand what happens practice-wise once he or she steps out of their studio. A practice log would also inform the teacher of what he or she had practiced and if revisions need to be made in their practice sessions. Thank you for watching our podcast. We hope this video will help you or your students form effective practice habits. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment or contact our instructor at this address. Bye. Bye. Good luck.